you know, the, the main difference is an extension is purely something that's written inside of Business Central um, as uh, an ability to augment the core functionality in the system, whether it's uh, adding new fields to pages and tables, or it's actually um, providing some new functionality in the system, maybe some different reporting um, that could be used by, by users of Business Central. Um, integration, um, as you know, is really the activity of connecting two systems together. Um, all integrations in BC typically start with an extension. So we, you know, we develop extensions to allow us to expose data inside of the ERP system to other systems, um, or as a way to push data out of the system to other systems. So really, the two play hand in hand. But you can have it. You can have an extension without an integration, and it's you can't really have an integration without extension based on on the scope of that. So Microsoft releases a, a handful of, of standard APIs that come with Business Central that expose some of the core pages uh, and tables uh, queries to the web um, that you know other systems can authenticate into and, and grab data um, for reporting or integration or things of that nature. Um, if there's ever you know uh, data inside of the system that's not exposed um, through that uh, Microsoft API framework that uh, they've released then um, you know, we as a SICH, as a partner, can um, develop custom APIs inside of uh, Business Central that can then expose um, additional data sets to the web um, to be accessed through REST APIs um, or through other reporting solutions. You know, that question is, is asked from a perspective of there's, there's a lot of these um, kind of point-to-point -point integration solutions that are on the marketplaces. Zapier is, is one of them. Um, even Power Automate is kind of a lightweight, similar to Zapier um, integration framework. Um, there's also others. Um, you know, I won't I won't go down the the list and name them all, but you know these these integration as a service platforms that that move data um, back and forth um, and do the transformations. Um, th those can work fine for lightweight um, integrations if a point to point is all that's needed. But what happens if you need to, say, take a piece of data from your system and send it to three different systems or four different systems? You know, maybe, maybe just as a simple example, you have an items catalog and you want that to go to your e-commerce system, you want that to go to your CRM system, you want that to go to a field service, you know, whatever, you go down the list, right? Um, doing those as a bunch of point-to-point -point integrations um, becomes a spider web. Um, also, those other, those other types of integrations, they're, they're not as real-time as, um, larger companies would like, and they have trouble handling the volume that a larger, you know, enterprise size or small enterprise company um, would 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 need or would want, um, and the maintenance of them, just keeping them running when there's an issue. Um, our, our clients have told us, and we've seen for ourselves as a headache. So that's where we start to look at the more um, enterprise grade tools, um, leveraging the various Azure integration services. So Azure Service Bus, Azure API Management. Uh, uh, logic apps, et cetera, um, because we know that they're very performant, um, they're very scalable, and um, you know you can you can make very um, very sophisticated hub and spoke types of integrations, or even point to point uh, integrations if if you'd like. Um, good example of that is, you know, what happens if some data is supposed to kick out from the ERP? The example I use was items, and um, maybe a downstream system is expecting a data point that the user forgot. Um, well, with some of the point-to-point -point solutions, um, you know, what do you do if the if the if the destination system rejects that data for whatever reason? You got to handle that somehow, right? All right. Well, if you can if you can if you can leverage more sophisticated tools, we can say, you know, hey, when this gets rejected, take a look at, for example, take a look at whoever the the person was that was attached to this record, who wrote this record, and go send them a notification that they forgot some data. They need to go fix it, do something about it. So things like that. You know, you can do with these types of tools that are just really difficult to do with some of the other um, the legacy kind of um, point to point integration tools. Another benefit um, to using to using that if it if it's right for the, the project is um, it keeps a lot of the, um, you know, the API development outside of the ERP system. So if something breaks um, with, you know, the other company's API or now they need a new field or the syntax needs to be tweaked instead of having to go in and, and, and write some new business logic inside of the ERP system, you can go and change that right in the layer that's integrating the two systems together. So it allows you to make changes that aren't disruptive to the, the system and the change control there, if anything were to ever uh, be impacted or need to be need to be patched based on, you know, best of breed systems changing their APIs, planning and forecasting systems, anything that's best of breed that a client wants to use to augment, uh, you know, NAV, Business Central, 
Um, we can integrate with it as long as we understand, you know, the, the business objectives here. Why are we doing this? What, what are the major data flows? And, and that's obviously something we work with our clients on to understand before we go in and do any sort of uh, integration design and development. I think there are a lot of partners that um, are still um, very focused on just, um, you know, BC. Um, uh, you know, and then there are other partners that are used to doing the types of things that we've been talking about um, around you know, creating very sophisticated extensions, um, very sophisticated integrations. Um, and, you know, it's, it's like a spectrum. So, you know, you've got, you've got, you've got partners all along the way um, on this, on this continuum of how experienced they are in doing these types of things. You know, I, I think one of the things that separates um, Sickage is that we were very early and aggressive adopters of understanding the landscape of tools uh, that Microsoft was giving us in the toolbox and taking a look at from look at it from a perspective of, you know, what's what's the really the right way to do this? What's the best way to do this? What's the most performant way of doing this? What is what is the way of doing this that is makes upgrades easier? Um, you know, that has the least cost of ownership um, long term. Um, and you know, so that's that's really how we approach these problems. Um, it's a you know, we're, we're we're very proud of how we do this and what we do, and, and we know that we're very skilled.